Hey there, toy collector friends and Transformers fans alike. Welcome back to the Time Travelling Toy Collector and my first review of one of the new Transformers in full. This is Rodimus Prime from the Kingdom War for Cybertron range. Um, frankly, this is an incredible piece of box art. Um, showing us uh, Rodimus in both his uh, Space Winnebago and uh, Warrior Mode, the evolution of uh, Hot Rod, uh, as I know you'll probably be aware. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful box design, as we've talked about before. Um, the cover art of Transformers boxes has always been one of the key selling points that they've played extremely well with. Uh, dating right back to Generation 1 boxes where the robots really sprang to life in the artwork uh, whilst they were very busy showing us the vehicular modes um, and on occasion when we transformed them from vehicles to robots we discovered those robots were a little bit mm, inarticulate and I don't mean they couldn't talk proper like what I can uh, I mean they you know they couldn't move their legs they had no real shoulder movements they were basically little bricks of plastic um, that just stood there and looked a vague approximation of a robot. Uh, not in every instance, there were some notable exceptions, um, but there were qu quite a lot that were not notable exceptions. Anyway, let's not look to the past, let's look to the future. And here is the future with uh, this fantastic piece of artwork here. So I'll just give you a quick um, rotation of the box before we move on to the main event itself. And you know, what's interesting to note, this is a Commander class figure. Um, the two other previous Commander class figures that came out within this range, if I remember correctly, were uh, Skylynx uh, and also Jetfire. Um, I do have, and if you've been looking at my Instagram, you will know both of those figures. And I will put them in the spotlight in at some time in the f near future, I think. Um, interesting to note, uh, I think it's interesting to note, that in terms of the box art for uh, all of the Commander class figures, there is no transparent window for us to see the product itself. So I shall whiz this round and we shall see the back and you will see just how dependent we are as a consumer uh, on what actually is being advertised here on the back of the packaging. Uh, so we can see Rodimus in his uh, all his glory here in his robot mode, um, in his car mode because he does have a um, mode that's far more representative of his hot rod identity than uh, certainly his Generation 1 counterpart had. Some of the special uh, additional effects that he comes with which includes a matrix of leadership, two smoke um, effects and a matrix of leadership um blast effect if you like and we'll talk a little bit about those well quite soon um additionally we also have the battle platform that we know and love from the generation one version um again there's a bit more playability to this version than there ever was in the generation one version and we'll talk about that too uh, and lastly space winnebago mode um, which is everyone's favorite I, uh, I say that uh, with a slight tongue in a slight cheek. Uh, I kind of still like it, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there in the fullness of time. But yeah, so we'll probably take Rodimus through this in the, in the various guises he appears here. Um, we'll do Rodimus in robot mode first, uh, and then we'll look at the battle platform while he's in robot mode. Then we'll look at his car mode, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with space Winnebago mode, and we'll look at his various accessories as we go along. So just finally, uh, one last chance to pick up from the front. Here he is in all his glory. It's Rodimus Prime, Commander Class from War for Cybertron Kingdom. Um, and if the packaging is anything to go with, this figure is gonna pack quite the punch. Let's find out. Okay, toy collector friends. So here is Commander Class Rodimus Prime out of his box and posed up ready for battle. Um, I'm just going to, he, he's, this is a big figure, it's not a huge figure uh, in the same way that Skylynx and Jetfire are frankly huge figures. Um, so from a, from a Commander class point of view, and I know others have said this, he's um, erring on the petite uh, range, 
but what he lacks for in stature, he does make up for in various other elements. Let me very quickly just give you a pan down. Um, this is Rodimus in all of his robo glory, complete with his trailer section behind, which we shall be uh, exploring in a bit more detail very, very shortly. Now, you can see here, um, he's currently, there's a lot of complaints about some of the new Transformers that they do end up having significant backpacks. Um, I've given Rodimus a backpack all of his own here. Um, this is the blaster array that comes um, with Rodimus and you'll be familiar with it, usually being poised within his uh, trailer section. But as you can see, it actually does have a direct attachment fitting. I've not made it terribly flush for the sake of ease of taking it back off. But it does uh, attach there and we can have some posability. We can aim it up, we can spin it around a bit. I'm not gonna go mad with it because obviously it's only here temporarily. Um, and I've also put on a couple of the blast effects that come with Rodimus Prime. So already we can see that he's, you know, quite tooled up and quite ready for action wherever action is required. However, in the sh in the short term, let's just pop that off the back and uh, we'll leave that over there and come back to it momentarily. Uh, so the main event himself, uh, poseable old Rodimus Prime telling us all that it's the end of the line. Yeah, thanks Rodimus, very, uh, very catchy. Um, now, this is a tremendously well-sculpted figure. You can really see the detail in his face there, um, from his eyes to his slightly weather-beaten, weather-worn um, features. Um, beautifully sculpted chest. I'll come back to his beautifully sculpted chest in a second, if you don't think that's too uh, weird of me to do. Um, the flame decal that is familiar to all uh, G1 fans. Uh, I mean, I've got to be. I've got to be honest. This is very true to the sort of a to the animated movie. Fantastic. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. But also to the. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this tentatively to the Generation One Rodimus Prime figure design, not its playability or its features, but to the design. Just to be really clear, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, and uh, and also to the Hot Rod design of both the 1980s and also uh, Studio Series 86 Hot Rod, um, not least when he's in car mode, more on that momentarily. Um, so that's his upper body. Uh, we've got some very well detailed and uh, contoured legs. I know some people f uh, seem to have felt that he needed a bit more in the legs department. Um, to be honest, I think this detailing is is pretty good. There's we don't we haven't gone overkill with needless decals to sort of pull the eye or overcomplicate uh, or dilute the impact. Um, and the detailing is kind of carried through around the the, the lower legs, the the thigh area. Then you've got the uh, the waist area, which is also very well detailed. Um, so yeah, I think Rodimus stands up very very well to scrutiny um his he has again a little bit of a backpack um but that's part and parcel of our rodimus he comes uh with those elements in play um and we can gear him up with some of his uh, own equipment but we'll, we'll look at that uh, in the fullness of time uh, in the meantime i just wanted to, to pop in there so behave yourself rodimus and stand up so we can have a good look at you um, because I just for the purposes of what I'm going to do next just wanted to bring in um, not for comparison as such or also for figure humiliation but I'm just going to bring in um, good old generation one Rodimus and uh, just have them doing a little sort of side by side there and I mean in terms of my comment about being sort of true to the original design of the Generation One figure and character in the uh, in the gen in, in the animated movie, hopefully you can see my point with that as you see them side by side, color scheme wise, overall structure. Apologies as I smash the camera into pieces. Um, these guys definitely mirror each other in in terms of of in terms of design aesthetic. 
obviously, um, this guy kind of, yeah, okay, I mean, thanks for popping in, but uh, yeah, he doesn't really have a huge amount to add from this point on. Um, this guy is, I mean, he feels like the Rodimus we were denied in the 80s and were overly dependent on our imaginations to give us and create for us. Another little thing I'm going to show you now, which I think is really cute, is you can unpeg his chest with remarkable ease, I hasten to point out. And lo and behold, here in the center, he has the matrix of a leadership. Um, he can take it out, he can hold it. I'm not going to do that right now, purely because if I take it out right now, I can tell you what will happen. It will get fall on the floor. I'll have to do lots of embarrassing re-editing. And uh, frankly, you don't want me to do that. You just want to see that this guy can do and answer the age old question. Actually, if I saw him in a shop, is he worth the commander class price point? Well, you may already be beginning to pick up my, my take on that. A um, bit more on that in, in a moment. For now, I'm just going to set Rodimus over here. Uh, and look at first one of the, the the additional bits of kit that he comes with, um, which was the, the blast cannon. Now, this is what we know and love from the Generation 1 um, battle platform. It's usually in there. I'm just going to slightly bring the, the camera down a bit so you can see what's what's, what's what down here. Um, this, the, from a playability point of view, once it's off his back, and it doesn't belong on his back, I just did that for... Uh, demonstrative purposes. Um, you can rotate this bit so you've got um, some very clearly designed um, tire tracks there or, or treads like tank treads. Um, so this actually becomes very quickly and very easily um, a mobile battle platform you see um, and it's got two handheld items uh, handheld ha elements there or uh, as we would call them handles so I'm over complicating that um, the extendable blast shields are there. Um, I think I turned that the wrong way around because I was using it on his back. So let me just get that straightened out. Might make life a bit easier. Um, I, can, I heard you all shouting at the screen, you see, so I picked up on it. Thanks, thanks for your support and got it. Um, now this again, this is a nice bit of additional kit. So it's a mobile platform. To be really, really clear, it doesn't have um, any actual wheels. It has a peg for additional playability later. Um, but in terms of imagination effect, you can imagine that it will roll along the floor and give it a, an element of versatility. These blast effects here um, are removable. They're in, they come along with the figure, uh, but we can, of course, so he, didn't, he wasn't away for long, have Rodimus come into the fray and ooh, knock it over and Galvatron wins. Now we can have uh, Rodimus come in and very much hold on to the uh, to the gun station and uh, zap away as needed to uh, against all the Decepticons, uh, Unicrons and frankly anybody else that is giving him cause to have a really bad day. Um, so that's that's a neat bit of additional playability that we never got with the original figure. Um, and I think it's kind of cool and uh, it gives him, you know, options and it gives us presentation options and display options. You know, all the things we perhaps didn't really get with his generation one counterpart. Let go. He doesn't want to let go. Let go of it. You can fight. You can fight later. Um, so I think this uh, as an as an entity, pretty good pretty nice pretty nifty um, and on the back of that I'll put it down over here and we can now turn our attention to the trailer section so here is the trailer section I'll try and leave it so it's all in shot it's big um, if you remember at all what the generation one trailer section looked like I just so happen to have it nearby um, you can there it goes where, where even is it um, it's right out of shot because it's so dinky um, trademark uh, Dinky Corporation. Uh, but you can see already, this is what we're talking about in terms of difference of scale um, between Rodimus from the War for Cybertron range uh, and Generation 1 Rodimus. And you can see that the, um, the core lines of it are very much retained. You know, this is, this is very clearly 
generation one Rodimus Primes uh, trailer section. However, it's also very much not generation one's uh, Rodimus Primes trailer section because this has gimmicks. Gimmicks, gimmicks, gimmicks galore. So first of all, you have an, an opening rear section, which has, and I, I love this, and I know others have said they loved it too, but I really, really love it. Um, these metallic pistons, which are very, very um, evocative of the kind of um, pistons and things you saw in toys back in the 70s and 80s, before they learned to do things cheaper and perhaps, perhaps more efficiently, but I think cheaper. Um, and a drop down, uh, ramp so that smaller vehicles in the absence of the gun system uh, smaller vehicles can actually drive in and out of there um, so Rodimus can carry them into battle or away from battle should that become necessary um, in addition to that he also has a compartment around the front uh, and to make sure I don't forget to tell you about it I've used it to store another one of his blast effects which is there um, I'll take that out for now because I think I'm going to find a use for it shortly. So that's a nifty little compartment that's there. And also we go back around here and uh, turn it turn it down here, turn our attention to down here. Um, we have another compartment here, which I can never actually get out, tucked away. Um, and this compartment is where his other blast effects are held that we saw on the, on the box. Um, I'll pop this one out because again I'm going to use it. That's the one you can attach to the matrix. And these are the two blast effects, smokes, smoke effects, uh, which do have a little place to sit in there. Interestingly, they're black. They look like some sort of oil slick. They don't look at all like they're very particularly good for the, uh, for the environment, do they? Uh, whereas we had clear plum, I'm just gonna pop them there while I put the, uh, the carry case uh, back under Rodimus's undercarriage, but uh, yeah, they very much do not reflect uh, how that's advertised on the uh, on the box itself. Doesn't want to go in. Um, but I think, in terms of, of storage space, that's really, really good. It also means we can do this. Uh, let me see if I've got this the right way around. Uh, we can attach to Rodimus's hands um, this. So we've got some additional... Um, kind of firepower or smoke power, if you will, um, should should that be a thing that you want to do. Similarly, and more, I think clearly, the intent is that it can be. Let me get again this for the right way around. It can be attached to the side of the truck uh, in tr in uh, vehicle mode, and he can be smoking away, uh, chugging away at the ozone layer and bigging up carbon monoxide. Uh, we'll leave them off for the time being. Um, but yeah, that's just something else that you can do. Lovely detailing. These are these are uh, not decals. Uh, and as you can see by a little bit of paint bleed on my version there, um, this, this is all part of the molded detail. Um, but yeah, there's various blast uh, and tech holes around uh, the vehicle. Which means you can, um, if you if you feel so inclined, you can have the vehicle under attack. So you can have uh, explosions occurring there. You can have explosions occurring uh, on the very top as he comes under fire from Decepticon jets. Maybe there's any number of options. Those are, and you know, we do like we do like a nice range of options. So let's take this and take it to the next stage because the next stage is opening this up to allow Rodimus to use it and you'll see what else is already inside so uh, opening it up is quite straightforward very much like the old G1 it literally just splits open here and here uh, and next up you can open this and also and another blast effect that I tucked away inside there as you can see they're all um, nestable, so you can extend them or not. This is a, a cheeky little thing here, because uh, this, this all opens up uh, and comes down, which I'll try and do. I'm always extremely nervous of anything like this, because I'm convinced I'm going to break it. Um, and for reasons I don't fully understand, 
that's supposed to sit that side of it, presumably so you can connect it to uh, other battle platforms that exist across the range, which of course makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, so it looks a bit spacious and cavernous at the moment because we haven't got uh, too much going on. This is flexible to either form a shield there or to um, let me move it so you can see. Uh, so you can have it as almost like a scoop or a storage area or some one a mini bot or a mini con could could sit in there. Um, you'll see Rodimus has got another two weapons concealed in here. Um, first up is his rifle. If you remember the generation one version uh, had quite a long rifle. Well, surprise, surprise. This little one uh, opens up and there is Rodimus Prime's very lengthy uh, battle rifle, um, which again, I'll put over here to one side for now. Um, and over this side, and I love that they've given us this, um, is what I believe to be, uh, and I'll move that up so it actually is what it's supposed to be, um, the Sword of Primus, I believe it's supposed to be. Uh, again, beautiful detailing on the blade. Sorry to keep losing focus on it there. Um, beautiful detailing on the blade. Really, again, in keeping with some of the detailing we've seen on Rodimus's uh, body sculpt. Um, excellent. That's excellent. And again, another additional battle feature. We're really gearing him up um, for, for a, a, real, a real bit of battle action. Um, bringing this piece back into play, uh, everyone's favourite piece, there's a tab here, which I will endeavour to, to pull down. There we, there we go. Um, that tabs into, or it's supposed to tab, into there, into the base unit there, uh, which is much more in keeping with the familiar base that we've seen in, the, in days gone by. And of course, in he comes, uh, everybody's favourite um, Matrix transformed figure uh, to take his place with his battle base. Give him a bit more space. He's a big old lad. Um, and again, he can go blushing his way through uh, any kind of uh, Autobot Decepticon skirmishes in his fully geared up battle platform. Um, now, I've shown you some of the rudimentary elements that come with this. Um, I think this is a really high quality piece. Uh, some people have said in their reviews or in their comments online that it's even better than some of the masterpiece versions of, of Rodimus Prime. I haven't collected or really looked at too many masterpiece versions of Rodimus Prime, but I think if you're looking to spend a decent amount of money, but you don't want to spend a stupid amount of money, um, this toy certainly seems to deliver on all fronts. Um, it has really, really excellent playability. It has some really great heft to it. Um, it's fantastically reminiscent of Generation 1 Rodimus Prime without ever being... Um, without ever making the sort of sacrifices of uh, playability and quality. I think the quality of the figure is exceptional. Um, I think the uh, range of features, again, I know there's lots of toy reviews out there. You don't really need me to reiterate what you've probably seen somewhere else. Um, I'm just really wanting to share my enthusiasm for this figure more than anything else. We'll disguise it as a review, but really I'm just uh, fanboying over him, if I'm being honest. It's amazing. It's the figure that, in my imagination, this guy always was. Uh, yeah, believe it or not. Because, you know, we had to imagine. We had to imagine. We had to um, really engage our creativity um, so that we could have fun with the Transformers that we had. Um, just to make some space, I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Um, that we had when we were in our formative periods. Um, so I think it's right and proper that now that technology and engineering allows it, we can have a Rodimus Prime that actually is not just the Rodimus Prime we deserve, but I think the Rodimus Prime that we need. 
Uh, and I, again, I know that he doesn't necessarily have the same size in terms of height about him when it comes to his other uh, Commander class compatriots. Um, but to be honest, there's a lot going on with this figure. There is a lot, a lot going on with this figure. And yeah, he isn't cheap, but you know what? I think he's every inch um, value for money. He is really, really every inch value for money. And, and I, for one, think that the beauty of the, the technology that's gone into his, his structure and, and again, his transformations, the fact that you can leave the matrix of leadership in his chest and he can transform and it doesn't become a, a, a problem is fantastic. Um, yeah, I think it's it's really, really a strong testament to the work of Hasbro. Um, and of course, all the fans that came before uh, before that have probably now got jobs in Hasbro and saying, oh, we could do this, we can do this better. And uh, I, think, I think they're uh, showing us that they can. I'm just going to disconnect him one more time because obviously the next phase of this is transforming the whole thing um, into a battle platform mode. Uh, I'm sorry, into his Space Winnie Bago mode uh, and car mode. So I'm going to move this that out of the way for a second and just pop him uh, over here and I'll, I'll swoop down in a second just to uh, make sure that we get the full, the full effect here. But what I want to do now is uh, just, I mean, I've done the side by side with G1 Rodimus. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming along. Um, but just to show you how he, how he squares up with others, um, he is Kingdom Optimus Prime. Uh, another, I think, tremendous reimagining of a classic figure um, with some excellent sculpting. And, you know, if you look head to head, Rod, uh, Optimus possibly has a millimetre or two on him. Um, Rodimus beats him slightly because of the spoiler on the back um but again another figure that really uh, has come to life uh for me so much more in the kingdom uh, in the war for cybertron range as a figure as again i know there have been several iterations um and his arch enemy from the motion picture i might have to hold him up don't want the waiter here we have Galvatron, who's showing off that he's also got a matrix of leadership that he must have swiped from somebody like uh, Ultra Magnus, maybe along the way. Um, and we can see how they square up to each other. Um, Galvatron, of course, is, I would say, far bulkier than, uh, than Rodimus. But uh, perhaps that's uh, a discussion for another time. Uh, I think they both have fantastic featuring and these are two figures I would very much like to see facing off um, in some of the upcoming photo shoot work and toy photography work that I'll be doing um, over on Instagram. But uh, yeah, great. I love all of these guys so far. So I'm just going to pop uh, Rodimus there, give you one more quick up and down pass on the camera, just so you can take in the wonder of Rodimus and I shall now using the magic of time traveling toy collectors everywhere take us into a point in time where Rodimus has been transformed into his car mode um, and you don't have to hear me screaming and swearing about the complexities of his transformation um, see you in a few minutes and in just no time at all he's completely transformed um, and I can honestly say the swearing was kept to a significant minimum, more or less. So here we have Rodimus Prime in his, uh, well, almost Rodimus Major format. I've equipped him with his, his uh, long rifle and also, again, one of the blast effects here, just really to show what you can do in terms of additional on-car storage. Um, the vehicle itself is is quite hefty. You can see it's a it's a it's a two hander rather than a, a single hander. Uh, I can take this off with, with relative ease. It can be stored. Um, we could store it on the side as well if we wanted to have it there. There are much as with any of the um, there we go with any of the uh, War for Cybertron vehicles. There's a lot of uh, on vehicle storage. 
uh, for the weapons that, that, that it comes with. But for now, let's keep him. Let's keep him nice and clean and tidy. Saying that, talking of clean and tidy, we can add. Get them the right way here uh, to make sure that I can get it on. Uh, we can add uh, the same smoke effects uh, that you saw earlier can be added to his exhaust um, for that kind of effect. Um, well, the rear guards are there, aka his feet. Um, but yeah, ultimately, this is a again a beautifully detailed, beautifully detailed vehicle. Um, the transformation is actually quite fun. Once you get over, and this is one of the things I find, I don't know about yourselves, um, I find quite, uh, the, the most challenging element is that there is sometimes some clearance issues um, around Rodimus's uh, legs, uh, also around the, the central uh, backpack area when you're in mid-transformation. I do experience the occasional uh, the occasional um, clearance issue, which which adds a layer of complexity uh, and challenge to the transformation, not least to my blood pressure, because, again, coming back to the point and not to labour it, this is not a cheap figure. You know, this is not... Uh, some of that tabbing isn't quite where I'm as, as flush as I'd like it to be. That's a bit better. Um, this is, you know, a figure that you are investing in and as part of that investment, I would very much like to see and have confidence in um, the tabbing and the ease of the transformation. So if I'm doing the transformation correctly, um, I don't want to experience um, too much resistance or too much um, pushback from the figure itself, purely because I'm going to start thinking I'm doing something wrong. I'm going to I'm going to break the figure, which, of course, um, I haven't done. There are some uh, segments here that actually I've really, really flushed the car more, more or less where in, once he's transformed. But they cover up the top end of his shoulders. Um, and I won't lie, one of them pops off regularly when I'm trying to transform him. Um, it's just a friction joint, so there's no pin, there's no actual damage. And it does often say that parts of the figure are designed um, to break away for ease. Um, it does. It doesn't ease my uh, my temperament when that happens. Is all I is all I can say. Anyway, let's go back to looking at the detail here. The transparent blue plastic is a beautiful shade and gives you a little bit of insight into the interior. Um, the detailing on the spoiler is magnificent, and as is really the the paintwork here. Um, we have got a mixture of die cast and molded plastic. Um, unlike the the hot rod toy, this is actually. Rodimus's chest uh, and chest piece. Uh, the hot rod figure has a fake chest piece um, or fake bonnet, depending which way around you want to play that. Um, but this is a this is a really neat figure. It's a really neat detachable figure in the same way that uh, Optimus Prime has a detachable cab that worked really well in conjunction with the trailer. Um, Generation one Rodimus, and I'm not going to humiliate him by transforming him and bringing him on without his trailer. Um, but we all know he was just a streak of legs, wasn't he? He just had a couple of carrots dangling off the back. And that was Rodimus Prime. Whereas here, um, Commander Class Rodimus Prime from Kingdom, he has a, a self-contained vehicular form that actually I think is really robust, really strong. Um, the, the, play, the, the, the playoff to that is that by design, he therefore has a slightly longer... Um, car frontage which then leads to having a slightly longer nose point for want of a better description nose points not even a thing um, but nose point let's let's coin the phrase that's now officially mine nose point uh, when he's in space when they go out um, which of course is very different to uh, how he appeared in his generation one form um, some people don't like that. I understand why they don't like it. It's not um, necessarily screen accurate, nor is it G1 accurate. But you know what? Nothing is 100% going to be screen accurate, and it's not going to 100% accurate. If it's 100% accurate to um, Generation 1, it wouldn't be looking as good as it looks here. So I'm, I can take that. I can take the slight adjustments. 
Um, there is one thing that I'm not um, as delighted by, but we'll get to that in a second. So let's bring in the transformed trailer section. Um, and we all know how it connects in. So I'll demonstrate how not to do it. He literally just slots in there and connects. And we can see straight away that he has this overhang. Now, I'm just going to stop myself here. You can see that I've been a bit naughty. Uh, I've put my pen has made it come out of uh, out of um, focus. I've I've actually used one of his uh, features that Generation One Rodimus didn't have, which is the ability to open the front section. Um, it's a slightly different configuration. It's not. I don't think it's one of the ones in the in the in the um, instructions. Um, but as you've seen, there's there's a lot of things you can do with this. There's a lot of different configurations you can have. Um, but I thought it could be quite fun. You know, you're driving along, giving it the full Rodimus, uh, and actually you can have the gun section come out of the front and blast away at whoever it is that he's following or blast away at a piece of Unicron's wall so that they can they can escape. Um, it's, it's just a thing you can do if you want to do it. Equally, um, you can say Rodimus transform back into uh, Space Win and Bago mode and Rodimus will oblige. And thank you very much, Rodimus, for doing that. So you can see it all then closes up here very, very neatly, and you wouldn't necessarily know it was even an option. Um, for those who like using the blast effects, um, if you're not using them in the cannon, you can use them around here at the back, uh, just to show that you're giving a little bit of extra Rodimus thrust. Um, they just peg in like all these blast effects do. Um, and uh, they're easily removed if you don't like the look at of them. So, yeah, Rodimus Prime in his full space Winnebago mode. Let me just uh, zoom out slightly just so we can get him all in shot. Um, so there we go. Uh, is he an incredible uh, addition to the range? Um, I like him. I think this is one for personal taste, so I can't really tell you what to do one way or the other if you're thinking about purchasing him. I really like the figure. Um, I can understand why people don't. I think it's a shame that we have this issue here where we have the uh, exhausts that have this split in them here. Um, they are essential based on the design. Could the design have been a bit different given the price point? And they could have found a way to maybe slide these down once the once Rodimus uh, was linked up. Um, I suspect they probably could have done. So I think that is a shame. Um, does it detract from his displayability and playability? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I love this mode, uh, but I probably would display him less in this mode and far more in some kind of battle platform mode. Um, so actually, for me, long term, this isn't really much of, of an issue. I can see why it's an, it's an annoyance, but for me, it's not much of an issue. Uh, for me, Rodimus will be displayed in robot mode and battle platform mode. Um, this will be for a, a long Sunday afternoon when I want to uh, frustrate myself with his little flaps. Um, but uh, that's not now. So my recommendation check him out uh, obviously you can't see the product um, if you find that if you're lucky enough to find the box somewhere you won't you won't be able to see inside um, but hopefully this video much like other reviewers videos have given you a bit of an insight into what he looks like um, into his playability um, as I've mentioned before he does come with a series of blast effects that nest within each other that you can um, pull apart you can join together um, so that you can uh, use them in a variety of formations um, and use them on, on, on his form. Um, he also has the sort of Primus, as I mentioned earlier on, that uh, you can use in your mock battle systems, as, uh, battle photos or, or gaming. You've got his extra long rifle that for additional storage can miraculously um, pegged together and fold in half which you can then store in the vehicle itself and of course you have the uh, uh, non-environmentally friendly uh, smoke effects which can be attached in a variety of locations now I haven't shown you all of the configurations that are possible um, 
for me, part of the fun of these figures is finding out what they can do uh, for yourself without being told all of it. Um, and there are some other iterations uh, that are possible, um, not least with the, the, the gun system, uh, the storage facilities that you have on, on Rodimus. I think he's great. Um, I, I think he's a really great character. Um, I think he's been, I think this is a fantastic embodiment of Rodimus Prime. Um, I've, I've seen, I don't own, I've seen a couple of the other variations of Rodimus Prime over time. I think this is, I think this is the standard now. I think this is, I mean, again, I've not looked at the masterpiece figures, but I can fully understand why people would say that actually this is better than a masterpiece, uh, a masterpiece figure. I, I would have to throw my weight alongside that because I think this is a fantastic piece, a really, really fantastic piece. And I, for one, am glad that I've managed to track it down and put it in my collection. Uh, I got mine from In Demand Toys in the UK. Um, they may be out of stock, but they do routinely have restockings. Um, so if you want to get your hands uh, on their stockings, or whatever you want to get your hands on, check out In Demand Toys website and you may be lucky. Of course, you may also want to look online um, elsewhere and you might find it. I would avoid eBay at the moment because there's an awful lot of people who are trying to uh, make a bit of a profit on the secondary selling of figures. And uh, frankly, uh, I'm a bit down on that. I can understand you getting, getting moving on and clearing out your, your lot, but if you're busy picking off the uh, retailers and then reselling, then uh, that's uh, that's not so cool for, for poor old uh, collectors and, and kids who are saving up to pay for these toys, because they, again, they're not cheap. Uh, and some kids just want to play with them and they can't because some adult collectors are buying four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and selling them on at an enhanced cost. Um, I think you know what I'm saying. Can't stop it, but I don't have to like it. Uh, I was very lucky, got mine from In Demand Toys and uh, there's no messing about with those folks. So thank you In Demand Toys and I'm happy to encourage people to go and check out the, the website. Um, folks, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you found this uh, little tour of uh, Rodimus Prime um, informative, interesting, uh, at places entertaining, in a couple of places slightly inappropriate, but hopefully um, that's nothing that I can't edit out if I remember to do so. Um, I would recommend this toy, but it's a considered purchase. Um, is he as big and as hefty as Skylinks and as Jetfire? Um, maybe on a par with Skylinks. Uh, Jetfire, of course, is significantly larger as, a, as an action figure. But again, what Rodimus lacks for in his personal height, he makes up for in playability with his battle platform, etc. So I totally am on board with the Commander class level of this particular figure. Um, is he a welcome addition? Of course he's a welcome addition. Does he photograph well? Oh yeah. I mean, you can just see the detailing here. I mean, I just, I could, I could wander around uh, the different views and the different perspectives on him for absolutely ages. Um, I think the thing I appreciate the most is how they've they've managed to really recapture some of the Generation 1 goodness um, whilst bringing him up to speed with modern engineering, modern uh, tweaks. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, this, is, this is the only bit. This I have no problem with. This, uh, I think they could have done something just to slide the... Uh, to, to slide the exhaust or lock the exhaust once he was um, mer merged. But you know what? Everything's a trade-off, so I'm, I'm quite happy with what we've got, and I'm really glad that we've got it. So, that's it for now. Thanks very much for staying with me for the last 25 minutes or so. Uh, if you found this uh, remotely interesting or remotely entertaining, then please do give me a juicy thumbs up, and I'll be very grateful. Similarly, um, I'll be even more grateful if you hit the subscribe button and I will be beyond grateful if you also turn on those notifications so that you never miss a future video. Uh, I've been the time travelling toy collector. 
you've been a fantastic audience so do continue being fantastic and head over to my instagram page to check out some of my rodimus prime and other toy photography uh and i will see you in the next video in the meantime remember please that a thing of beauty truly is a toy forever take care and roll out mm -hmm.